Hey, what's going on? Thank you so much for watching. It would mean the world to us if you could just scroll down, like, hit the subscribe button for the Snaps YouTube channel. It goes a long way towards helping us out. Now, let's dive into some college football. I, I, I agree with you, dude. Look, I think that this idea of the dynasty being dead is, is dependent upon how do you define the imp uh, death of an empire, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think, I, okay, I know this. You will never reach the level of recruiting dominance that mm -hmm. they've currently occupied. Uh, if you look at since, I can't remember what the exact cutoff was. Maybe it was like since we've been, I don't know, maybe since the inception of Rivals or somewhere around there. I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but like Alabama's had, oh no, sorry, I think it was in Saban's tenure. Alabama had the number one class eight different times. Mm. I think Jimbo was second, having it three times. Kirby got it twice. And then you had a few guys who had gotten it once. The point being, even compared to Kirby, even compared to Ohio State, to anybody, Nick Saban stood alone by mm -hmm. far on the recruiting front. Not even close. Georgia mm -hmm. made up a lot of ground recently, but still not even close. So I don't think, so I think it's very fair to say they will never reach that level of recruiting dominance again. Um, I don't think they'll achieve the consistency of winning a national championship at least once every three years, which is what Nick Saban did up until this year. And that's also because the sport is changing. And as we said, that might well, be harder to do. Well, and let, I don't let think you, yeah. Let me ask you this question. I mean, you start off the, the conversation talking about like, is the, is the dynasty going to now be dead going forward? Was the dynasty already dead? No, even no, with Nick? no. No, I mean you. You know this you, is a flawed you, team no, that won the SEC no, and beat Georgia and made care. it to a playoff. I know that there were cracks. There were you certainly have, you cracks. You have talked about you can't have two dynasties going on at the same time. So you're essentially saying that we are. There is well, no Georgia, Georgia had dynasty. a chance to. No, I told you you had to get the three. Yeah, so yeah. No one's ever done that. Not even Alabama. So why does Alabama get granted but Georgia can't without well, three? If, if you get if you get like. Four and ten years, or I'm just saying, like if we, if we, if we do fast dynasty. forward, and I think we're going to touch up on this a little bit later in the show. Like if we do fast forward, you know, ten years from now, and and Kirby does win two or three more Natties, which if there's a coach to do it, it Kirby's definitely on the short list for that. If not the guy to do that, yeah. Then duh. maybe we do look back and say the dynasty was dead in two, after 2020, 2021. Like that was it. Like the the the, the beginning of Georgia's dynasty started then. So really, this whole Kalen DeBoer taking over Alabama was not the beginning of the end. The beginning of the end happened two years ago. Uh, I mean, I would disagree simply because with ultimately one of Nick Saban's most flawed teams, they still beat Georgia, a very powerful mm -hmm. Georgia that was thought to be the favorite. They never the won SEC a championship. championship. They won a championship, though. They won an SEC championship. And they made the playoff and they took the national champions down to the last play in OT. Like... No, I, I I think if I think if okay if if Nick Saban was still there, where would they rank next year? Number two, it'd be right oh, there. Yeah. So oh, that's yeah. what I'm saying. So no, I I think look, it, it was waning. You could say it wasn't at the height of its power anymore, mm -hmm. but it was still very much alive. Um, and I think I think it may continue to be alive. Again, it's how you define these things. Like I don't think they'll win 11 games, 15 out of 16 years, mm -hmm. like they just did recently. That's it. But I still think they'll be a consistent top 10 team at least uh top 10 i i think and they'll 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 go top five every now and then like i said be championship relevant they going in next year they still have tyler booker they still have jay miller they still have malachi moore they still have deontay lawson like the majority of the team is still there and one thing to consider and the espn article kind of touches on this is with these other guys leaving and all this insanity yes that has the potential to break a team but that adversity also has the potential to galvanize a team, like the crucible, to forge them closer together. And that's Kalen DeBoer's one main rule he's been telling the players is the one rule is we're going to be a family. We're going to be close. We're going to be fighting for each other. Well, a great way to galvanize those who remain is with that message, right? With this mm -hmm. message of, okay, if you look, if you don't care about Alabama, if you were only here for saving, if you want to go chase the bag, Go chase the bag. But then you got guys like Booker out here saying, look, no amount of money. And this is what I was getting at is that, yes, you're having some lead, but the majority of the roster, a lot of them are there for the A. Like Tyler Booker straight up said, there is no amount of money uh, that you could give me that would that would make me leave Alabama. Like, I care about my legacy here. And so 
Yeah, I, I, I think that I think I mean, does Alabama finish in the top ten next year? And next year should be kind of arguably maybe the lowest year, unless they just well, go off on and never get it back. I want to go to this too. I mean, player, we, I've always had the mindset of like, you know, players are are the key, the engine, everything. Like players are the ones that are out there playing. They're the one that have to go out there and execute. But who is who has been? There's been very few coaches that can take you to a national championship. And we bring up Texas A&M all the time. Like, why, why, why hasn't Texas A&M, who has the players? I mean, they've they've just as much talent as anyone else in the country. Uh, have the facilities, have the NIL resources. Why aren't they winning championships? Well, they haven't had the guy at, at the head coaching position. They just haven't found that guy that could possibly take them from being everything check 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 A plus A plus A plus to an actual championship. Well, because like there's only so many coaches that know how to run a program efficient enough to win a championship. It's been it's been Nick, it's been Kirby, it's been Dabo, it was Urban Meyer for a while. There are very few coaches that can do it. So why why Alabama may have all this great you know star power is Kalen DeBoer that guy to win a championship? What are we? What the fuck are we talking about? He's won championships. I know. I just agree. Talk- and he but just I'm brought Washington to one. I know. Of course That's he I'm is. Kind of, I, I, was le- I wasn't saying he wasn't. Okay. I'm just okay. saying, like, when we look at college football, it's it's a lot is to do with the coaches. That's why they no, get No, it's all the coaches. It, it, they are. Coaches. That's why I always compare to the do Roman. You have, do, you have a, do, you have a, do you have a national championship coach? Yes or no? And there's only been a handful of guys that you could say – that coach can win a national championship. But also, let's be clear, like this idea of a national championship coach is kind of flawed a little bit mm. uh, because coaches can catch lightning in a bottle. Look at Les True. Miles or Gus Malzahn. Even though, to be fair, Les did make it back to another one, so Gus is a more prime example there. I mean, Mark Jimbo, who I Jimbo. completely forgot about, played for national championship at Oregon. Yeah, and coaches can be awesome for a time and then lose it. Look at mm-hmm. Dabo. Mm-hmm. Right. So you can never really know if somebody like I I don't know how to exactly qualify. Is this coach a national championship coach? I, I guess it comes down to like belief. Like, do you believe in your gut that you think he's capable of doing that? I mean, Kalen DeBoer passes that and then some. Mm-hmm. Um, so cool tie. Is Kalen DeBoer better than Brian Kelly? I will tell. It's I less know. proven. Time will tell. I think that's mm-hmm. the answer there. Because mm-hmm. Brian Kelly also won championships at Grand Valley State, a lower level, like uh, Kalen did at Sioux Falls. Right, uh, Kelly's, Kelly's, Kelly's been on the – yeah, and he's, and he's played for Natty as well. Like he's Kelly's just been on the big stage for way longer. Mm-hmm. we got to see if Brian – if, if Kalen DeBoer has the uh, staying power now that he's here, which I think he does. <laughs> like I think, I, think, I think both those guys are probably top five guys in the entire country. Um, so now you have 21 players mm. who've entered the transfer portal. Okay, let's actually let's say this way. Uh, so since the Rose Bowl, they've had they've seen Nick Saban retire, Alabama fans have. They've had 21 players total enter the portal since the Rose mm. Bowl. I want to say though, it's only like six after Saban, but it is some of the biggest names highlighted yep. by uh, uh Proctor and Caleb Downs. Yep. They've had six major recruits decommit, mm. uh, five stars for the 24 and 25 class. Now, granted, some of those are going to revisit as well. So it's you know a pretty level-headed decision from them. Kind of see what the new staff's all about, give them a little time to get in. Mm-hmm. But that has led to a lot of Alabama fans. We did our dramatic reading of my text group yesterday. That has led to a lot of Alabama fans being like, this sport is so broken now. I hate it. I mean, well, somebody's got to fix college football. Here's the thing, though. And this is why I say shut the fuck up is and stop panicking. Is this is not so much Alabama getting being an outlier in terms of the roster being pillaged. Um, this is Alabama joining the party. Let's just look. I'll name you some of the schools and how many recruits have had leave this year. Louisville has had 21 players enter the transfer portal this year. Florida State's had 20. South Carolina had 21. NC State had 19. Uh, Arkansas had 24. Purdue had 26. USC had 21. Indiana had 23. Ohio State had 20. Texas A&M had 21. So again, Alabama's 21 is not an outlier. I mean, Ole Miss had 17, Colorado 17. You go down the list, Oregon uh, 13. Like, again, not an outlier. It's mm-hmm. just 
what had not happened to them previously that had been happening to other teams is now happening to them at a higher rate than they are used to. It's, 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 not, it's not just a higher rate because everyone's going to have turnover in today's game. Georgia had a massive turnover. I mean, Georgia a month yeah, ago. Yeah, what Georgia had like 17? Yeah, Georgia had a bunch, but once they like, I would say the majority of those guys weren't starters. They or they the majority were, of they, Alabama's guys weren't starters. Once again, like like yes, that hundred percent. I'm I'm with you. Like they weren't starters. They're talented kids that were highly recruited. They have a bunch of stars to their name. So it's like, damn, I wish we could have seen what that X five star guy would have looked like with another season in Alabama. It's it, it it's it's I think it's less pre more post. I think it's all post. Honestly, like that's that's the you have just lost maybe the most talented safety in the country. Yeah. You've lost a starting left tackle. Like that's the difference. Everyone is going to lose players and hell you may lose some starters. Ole Miss just lost maybe the best running back in the SEC, one of the best running backs in the country. Like, yeah, that awesome. will randomly happen, but that doesn't happen to Georgia. That doesn't happen to Alabama. If you're a starter and you're an elite player, you stay in Athens, you stay in Tuscaloosa. Yeah. 